What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. In the last episode, what did we do? Um, this is interestingly uh, different than before. A lot of times in the previous time, or one of the previous times that we've done the story so far, they mention the whole Raymond abduction, etc. But now they say the professor and Luke continue their investigation around St. Mysterie. A conversation with the Baron's associates led the pair to the grave of the Baron's former wife. We found the journal, and then, uh, are no close. Regardless of this, Luke and Blaine are no closer to understanding just what the Golden Apple is. I love that. Uh, the menacing tower at the edge of St. Mysterie has roused the professor's suspicions. Eager to investigate further, Luke and Layton head in its direction. Yes, we're supposed to find a path to the tower. The music has changed, and sure enough, um, our Robopup is telling us where we can find all of the hint coins. And we're gonna see if anybody has puzzles for us along the way, because that's that's the game we're playing. Count on you to catch the no good fiend who skipped out on his bill. That's right. You probably don't have a puzzle for us at the time, so so we'll head on out, I guess, and uh, and keep on going with that. Um, we've got a couple friends out here. I expect them to have different puzzles now. So good day, gentlemen. How's your investigation coming along? I can't imagine it's much fun asking questions all day, so how about a puzzle to liven things up? Of course, just a couple minutes in, and we're at our first puzzle. The Sound of Silence. 40 picarets. Which of these words doesn't make the sound of silence? The Sound of Silence. Hmm. So, so this is obviously a, what do they mean by sound of silence? Um, is it that there are multiple sounds within the word silence? Is it the long I? No. Um, is it the E-N part? Is it, there are no silent letters in silence, maybe the E at the end? But even then, um, hmm. Is it that all of the all of the words have a silent letter except for rest? Maybe that's it. Cause scale has a silent E at the end, note has a silent E, treble has a silent E. Rhythm has a silent H after the R, and chord has a silent H after the, the C as well. So at first glance, I'm thinking rest would actually be the case. Um, otherwise, what do these words represent, right? They're all different types of music. Um, for what it's worth, a note would be playing a sound, a sound treble. Isn't that type of like, like treble clef? That wouldn't necessarily be related to a particular sound. Same with scale. Hmm. I think it's rest. I want to make sure I don't get it wrong, but I can't think of much else, admittedly. Something related to different sounds within the word silence. Um, there's not a lot that's in common with any of these words. And in terms of the meaning of the words, some of them make refer to things that, I guess, make sounds, while some don't. Um, but there's not one that stands out. So in that case, I think I'm going to go with rest, because it doesn't have a silent letter. Does the E at the end of note, treble, and scale count as a silent E? I guess so, you're not making either a short E or a long E sound. Yeah, I'm going to give it a go. Let's see how it goes. Well, here's my guess. Alright. We got it. Professor, I've solved it. I've solved it. <laughs> Excellent. That's right. The answer is rest. All the other options have silent letters. That was pretty cool. That was pretty clever, I would say. Um, yeah, the sound of silence. Pretty clever phrasing. Hmm. I guess the old advice to write what you know doesn't apply here. That was just too easy. You know, right now I'm penning a mystery novel and I'm basing the protagonist on you. This is why I've been observing you so carefully. In fact, the more I see of you, the better. So good luck with your search. I'll be watching. 
<laughs> Percy joins the party. The game switches to RPG action. We'll give Leighton the reading lamp. Are their rooms really not full? Let me let me just take a look. I guess not. <laughs> yes, yes, I see improvement here. What does Luke have to say? Yes, it's finally starting to feel like home. Okay, for now. Not sure what to make of this, honestly. Okay. I mean, I guess it's working well enough for now. Um, their happiness is okay. Layton says it's not bad. Uh, whereas Luke says it's alright. Um, do I want to take the time to go through this right now? So they only need one rug at a time. Um, do... Oh, they, this has a cream rug. Brilliant, I just love how round it is. Okay, so that's that's good. Um, how about the stuffed bear? Just look how expressive that bear's face is. How does Luke react? Oh, hello there, Mr. Bear. <laughs> um, seems pretty happy with that. We'll give the blue bed to Luke. It's a bunk bed. And then we'll give the pine bed to Layton. Finish on this frame is just lovely. Okay. We're making progress, slowly but surely. I think I'm gonna move things around a little bit just so I know that the things at the top left are what I've established are good. The teak bureau, these drawers are just the perfect size for me, okay? How about this bookcase? I think I'll just slip those books in here, all right? A pile of books. It's a good thing I have this bookshelf. So they've gotta go together, presumably. The house plant. The delicate emerald hues of nature, just lovely. How do you feel about it, Luke? Well, I guess it's kind of calming. Um, all right, we'll keep that with Layton then. How about this stuffed chair? What luck, it's just perfect for curling up with a good book. Let's see what Luke has to say. My, isn't this fancy? I bet it's all squishy and soft. Interesting. So it seems like they both like that. Um, the hat rack, that's just the thing I need. I don't ever take my hat off. Okay, so that's clearly with Layton. The reading lamp. The lamp, a bit bright though, don't you think? Now this is what I need to brighten things up here. Okay, we are we are talking. How about the television? Need a telly. I wonder if it still works. Um, what does Layton have to say? Television? That's nice, but I prefer a good book myself. Yeah, so that's definitely Luke. <laughs> I don't know why we're taking the time to sort this all right now, but but hey, we are. Um, the desk's neat, but it needs something to go on top of it. What is? It's a bit square for my taste, but I suppose it will do. Okay, so this definitely goes with Luke, but it requires something on top of it. Flower bouquet. These will wilt if I don't put them in a vase. Um, not sure what to make of this, honestly. Wait, do I not have the vase? No, I do. Can I combine them? No. Hmm. It looks pretty, but it would look better with flowers in it. Okay. Exquisite. I feel reinvigorated just by looking at them. I have flowers that will look smashing with this. Wow. It's pretty passionate about those. Alright, splendid painting. What brushwork? The room isn't complete without a little art. Mm, I guess this painting is nice. Alright, so this is definitely Leighton. How about the world map? Knowledge of geography is key for any puzzle fan. Yes, that's a map of the world. It sure is big. <laughs> Alright, that sounds a little bit more uh, fitting for Leighton then. I suppose a hint of mystery adds to any room. I'm not sure what to make of this, honestly. Alright, well, we'll keep it in Leighton for now, but it's not certain. The stuffed bear. Um, that's right, Luke was rather thrilled about that. The wall clock, this could be handy. One should always watch the time. What worksmanship? I wonder if it's tea time yet. We'll leave it with Layton for now. How about this lacquered stool? Wouldn't be very comfy to sit on. What a fine piece of furniture. It even matches the walls. Alright, with Layton it is. What does... Okay, so I think with that, we'll be good. Yes, yes, I see improvement here. And Luke getting there, I suppose... Wait, they're both still at not bad, and mmm... If anything, I think Luke's happiness went down. But I think Layton's went up. It might just be a quantity thing, because Luke clearly has fewer items now overall. Oh well. I guess that was my attempt at, at doing that. <laughs> um, how many painting pieces do we still need? We need four more, right? Yeah, we need four more. Okay, and with that, back to the adventure. Back to the journey. Let's chat with our friend here and see if he has a new puzzle for us. Nothing good can be said about that tower. I heard it's all sorts of scary. You should stay away. Yep. Okay. Nothing, it seems. How about in Granny Riddleton's? Anything in the shack? Nope. I do remember it would tell us when something came in uh, 
and was stored there or sent there, but just wanted to check to be safe. How about in here with our document friend? I'm responsible for managing the influx and outflux of residents in St. Mysterio. In other words, I supervise who gets to stay in this village and who has to be shown the door. Do you wish to stay in St. Mysterio? I strongly advise that you butter me up <laughs> by solving this puzzle. For those of you... Well, whenever it comes to the phrase, buttering things up, I can't help but think of Corpse Party. For those of you that haven't heard of the game, I suggest you watch my Let's Play. For those of you that watch my Let's Play, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alright, this board has 12 dots on it. Your task is to connect these dots to form as many squares as possible. You can use each dot multiple times, and you can orient the squares however you wish to fit them on the board. However, to be counted as a square, each corner must be on a dot. Many different squares can be drawn on the board. Can I attempt to draw them? I can. Okay. Interesting. Um, so how many can be drawn, right? So there's some obvious ones, right? This is like one square. And then this is a second square. This is a third square. This is a fourth square, right? So there are clearly at least five squares. However, we can actually draw more squares. Um, we can't draw any that are wider than this, but we could draw one that's like this, right? So that's one more square in addition to the original five. Then we could do this one here. That's another one. And then we have this one here, so that's another one. Then we've got this one. Now the grid, lo grid looks pretty messy, but so far we're at nine. We're at nine with that. So what I'm going to do is clear that and write nine up in the top right. So what other types of squares could we make? Um, we could make some larger squares. Right? If I were to do something like this, that's a big square, and that works. Similarly, I could make a square using these. So now we're at 11 in total. And I think that actually exhausts them. I don't think there are any more we could make for the time being. So I think, I think we can draw 11 squares. I think we're at 11. There were the five obvious squares. There were the four small but diagonal squares, I guess. Um, and then there were the two really large diagonal squares. see many other ways to go about it so yeah let's um let's go with 11 I feel pretty pretty solid about this I feel like I rushed this one a little bit but but I feel pretty good about it okay nice puzzle solved Ah, they show them all like that. Nice. The two biggest squares were definitely the trickiest. Ah, yes, that's the answer. Very well, then I approved your application to visit the same mysterious. But when you have finished your business here, I strongly advise you to leave town. Oof, a gramophone. I'll we'll give it to Layton for now. Alright, um... Well, I guess we should check to see if there's anything else hidden in this guy's room. Doesn't seem like it, though. Okay, um, now where to? So we were supposed to look we we're supposed to look for a path to the mysterious tower, however, as I mentioned before, we're gonna explore everywhere we can prior to actually progressing the story and attempt to solve whatever puzzles may be available. Whew, made sure looks up a mean appetite, I'm starving. Okay, that was the same thing you were saying before. What does this chuckling lady have to say? Where's the fun in running around? Okay, I remember that from before. We can go inside the restaurant. I don't think Flick is gonna have anything more for us. But we'll check. Sorry to lay you down, fellas, but I'm all out of puzzles to give you. Okay. Crouton, you got anything for us? Crouton, my man. <laughs> Fresh out of puzzles. Okay. And nothing... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to happen, but... That's okay. Anything lingering in the room? Nope, I guess not. 
We can then head over to the park just to be safe, make sure there are no hidden uh, puzzles in the trees or in the trash or whatever it may be. It seems about right. Okay, we can go to the right now. We can chat with Marco, he's gonna talk about how wonderful Lady Dahlia looks. Yep. <laughs> um, we'll check inside the general store. See if there's anything of interest in the cabinets, in the chairs. No, doesn't look like it. Okay. Just quickly covering my bases. Um, we'll head back to the mansion. Oh, Raymond is here. We haven't chatted with him in a long time. Does he have a puzzle for us? Oh, if it isn't Professor Layton. Judging by your expression, it seems you haven't found the golden apple. You look terribly tense, Professor. Perhaps this small puzzle will help. Oh, loosen you up. <laughs> Alright, so I'm glad we head back towards the mansion. Um, we've got another puzzle from Raymond for the first time in a while. Help Stash and Scarf and move the wolf, sheep, and cabbage from one side of the river to the other while obeying the following rules. In addition to its captain, the raft can only support one animal or item at once. When Stash and Scarfin isn't near, the wolf will eat the sheep and the sheep, um, and you'll have to start over. The sheep will eat the cabbage when Stash and Scarfin isn't around. If you let the sheep have its way, you'll have to start over. You can shuttle the raft back and forth as many times as you like, but the shortest solution takes seven. So we use our stylus to load a wolf, sheep, or head of cabbage onto the raft. Since Stashin must plot, pilot the raft, you can only move one element at a time. Touch the raft to send it. You do not need to load anything to move it back and forth. Okay. So, um, in, in line with the first thing, uh, or the first, I guess, puzzle we did of this sort, um, we, there's only one move we can do at first, right? We can't take the wolf uh, across because the sheep will eat the cabbage, and we can't take the cabbage across because the wolf will eat the sheep. So we must take the sheep across, right? Um, so let's do that. Thank you, Stashin. Um, now we need to come back across, and then what we're going to do is take one of these two. And then when we drop it off, we're going to take the sheep back. Oh, actually, yeah, it doesn't even really matter which one we take. This is actually a lot simpler than I'd anticipated. Now we do that. Go across. Go back. Put the sheep on. And across. And there we're we done. <laughs> I was like... I feel like the first puzzle we did involving that Every was more complicated than that answer. one, but oh well. Um, yeah, and we did it in the shortest solution, which was seven moves, so wonderful. That was masterful, but I expected nothing less from the great Professor Layton. <laughs> and we've got ourselves another painting scrap. Awesome. So we are only three away from having all of the painting scraps. Let's head into the mansion and see what else we can find. Is Matthew here to greet us? He is not. Okay, let's see if maybe Inspector Chelmy, Lady Dahlia, etc. have anything to say. Needn't worry. Okay, this is the same thing as before. Lady Dahlia is going to tell us how tired she is. Yep, she'd like to be left alone. Gordon, still having trouble finding some of those bachelorettes in town. <laughs> Seems so. Okay. Well then, we'll head back. I'm glad we at least checked the area, though. I would have been very disappointed. Well, I mean, in general, I was disappointed when we did miss some puzzles in the earlier chapters, right? Because you don't get to chat with the villagers, and I feel like so much of this game is the characters. Um, they're each of their personalities, their funny, quirky little traits, their punny names and, and silly jokes. All of the above. Let's see, are you gonna tell me about your sister again? Adrian's really nice, but she comes up with some tough puzzles. Are going to have to help your, your cat again? Or help the mouse, rather? Can we go in here again? We can. Does Archibald have something for us? I'm glad we can at least re-access this room. Um, so sorry to bother you while you're busy, but you'd make an old man very happy by helping with this puzzle. <laughs> Certainly, let's have a look. Alright, I'm glad we stopped by. 109, Laziest Man on Earth. 
Wow, okay, behold, before you sits the laziest man in the entire world, known far and wide for his aversion to physical activity. This slug has designed his house so that he can grab anything without leaving the comfort of his recliner. Using an elaborate set of tools, including a fishing rod, extendo arm, and high energy magnets, this legendary loafer has put everything in the room within reach. However, despite his efforts, there's one place he can't reach without getting off his duff. Um... <laughs> what a picture. What a picture. It's quite funny, actually. Is there a cat in there? Looks like it. Yeah, he's playing with the cat right now with a, with a fish toy. That's actually really funny. Um, so if I had to guess, that one place is going to be his... his butt itself. <laughs> um... He cannot reach his butt slash under his butt unless he gets off of his butt, presumably. Because he could reach his feet, he could reach anywhere else on his body, presumably. Uh, he may even be able to get around the chair, etc. But I think that would be the only place he wouldn't be able to reach. I think that might be the uh, the trick here. Yeah, I, I kind of want to try that. Right? Because unless you... Unless you get off the duff, which, for the record, is a word I've never heard used before, but in this context, makes me think that it's the, uh, the chair. <laughs> but I honestly can't say I've ever heard somebody use that word before. Um, I mean, like, I've, I've heard of duffel, duffel bags? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, though. It would be nice if I could have the ability to clarify. But either way, I think, um, I think they're referring to the chair. So, I think the only place is, is his butt. Um, let's give it a go. I don't know how lenient they're going to be with the circle. There we go. That could be a real frustrating aspect of the puzzle. Hey, that's it. <laughs> Critical thinking is the key to success. This will be a funny explanation. That's right. There's no way for him to reach under his chair without getting off his rear end. If that fishing rod extendo arm and magnet combo works as well as it seems to in the picture, this fellow may never get up again. All right, so they were referring to under the chair, not under his butt. Um... I guess, I guess I can see where they're going from, or coming from. I, uh, I appreciate their leniency with the circle there, at least. So that's the answer. In my heyday, I could have solved a puzzle like that before you could say cobblestone. <laughs> my goodness, I guess I'm getting soft in my old age. A teak table. I think we already gave the teak stool to Leighton, so we'll give that to Leighton as well. And is there anything else to investigate here? Books, chandeliers, desk, whatever it may be. No? Okay. Then we'll head on out. And continue our journey towards the tower. First of all, we'll head into the cafe. Empty as expected, but nevertheless, um, it was worthwhile to take a look. Let's see if our friend, our meat-obsessed friend is over here. Ah, he is. As is Ingrid. Interesting. Or not Ingrid. Um, oh, what's her name again? Anyways, Giuseppe says, You sure I can't interest you in a nice cut of veal? It's a veal deal. Aw, oh, man. No new puzzle. Agnes, well, if it isn't you two again. Alright, if you want your fortunes told, solve this puzzle for me. Alright, here we go. Broken window. Now we're getting all the 30 pick rat puzzles. We were doing 70, 40, and 60 before? Anyways. Ah, oh, it's another one of these. Four kids were playing, and one of them threw a ball right through your window. Here's what they had to say for themselves. A says, not me, I didn't break a thing. B says, okay, I'll tell the truth, it was me, I broke it. C says, don't be mad at A, he didn't do anything. D says, B didn't break the glass, I swear. Okay, so B and D immediately contradict themselves, and A and C seem to be in concordance. You know for a fact that the scamp who broke your window is lying. However, an unknown number of the other children may be lying as well. Okay. 
So that's, this is actually an interesting twist. It's not just, oh, there's one person lying or there's two people lying, etc. It's, a number of them could be lying, but the only thing you can rely on is that the person who actually broke the window is lying, right? So now we look at the individual statements and say, all right, um, A says, not me, I didn't break a thing. And we have to consider if he broke the window or if he did not break the window. If he did break the window, he would be lying, which would be, um, I guess, like congruent with the statement, right? He says, not me, I didn't break a thing. So if he broke it, he would be lying, and that would be in concordance with him actually breaking it. So A is not ruled out by that. How about B? Okay, I'll tell the truth. It was me, I broke it. If B broke it, B would be lying, which leads to a, a paradox or a contradiction and makes means that can't be B. Because if B broke it, yeah, B would be lying. And um, similarly, B could not say, I'll tell the truth, <laughs> uh, because that in and of itself is a paradox, right? It's like, am I telling the truth or am I lying? And you say the statement, I'm lying, right? If if you're they're telling the truth, you're lying, and if you're lying, you're telling the truth, right? Um, so so I don't think it can be B. Um, so B did not break the window. What about C? Don't be mad at A. He didn't do anything. Did C break the window? If C broke the window, he'd be lying. And if he's lying, what does that imply? Don't be mad at A, he didn't do anything. That would mean A would have done something, but C would have also done something. We also know that there's only one person who broke it, so that can't be the case. C could not have broken it. How about D? B didn't break the glass, I swear. If D threw the ball through the window and broke it, D would be lying. What would that mean? Well, D says B didn't break the glass, I swear. And if D is lying, that would mean B did break the glass. However, this is based on the assumption that D broke the glass, leading to a contradiction. So A must be the person who broke the glass. Because B, C, and D all lead to contradictions. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the case. Yep, so we're gonna go with A. Feel pretty good there about that. Go. All right. The Another statements were pretty clear solved. there, which, as you've seen in the past, makes quite a big of, or quite a bit of a difference. B and C were also lying about what happened, even though they themselves didn't break the glass. Make sure you give those two a good scolding as well. There's going to be a doozy of a rainstorm tomorrow. Hang your wash inside if you want it to dry. Aw, oh, we don't get anything in addition to that. I was hoping we'd get um like a painting scrap or something. Oh, so we can go right or north. Interesting. So that's where we're going to push forward. Um, for now, though, we're going to talk to Gerard, and we'll stop by Prosciutto's as well. You are certainly crazy about puzzles, aren't you? Well, I've got a whopper of a puzzle for you. Number 68. Find the pentagons. Ooh, it's 40 pick rats. Okay. Um, a number of five-sided shapes are hidden within the picture below. How many can you find? Answer when you think you found every hidden shape. Okay, so right off the bat, there are four immediately, right? Sort of the house shape. Or no, that's actually technically a hexagon. That would be a hexagon if we were to do something like this. It looks like a pentagon. Or no, no. <laughs> Being silly, this is a pentagon. So there are four of this, right? You can do one with each corner. So that's immediately four pentagons. However, I suspect that we're going to find more than that. Hmm. The question is, what other pentagons are there? 
there's a number of five-sided shapes. I think that's where things are going to get difficult. Um, just because, for example, this shape here has five sides, right? It's technically two triangles, but it's also technically a pentagon. Would that technically count as a pentagon? Because it has five sides. And there would be four of those as well. Hmm. Let's see what else there is. Let's see what else there is. What if I were to do like a one, two, three, four, five. That would technically be a pentagon. And similarly, we could do four of those. This I'm pretty, this I'm confident about being a pentagon. It's not a regular pentagon, but it is a pentagon. So, we could do that in four different ways, obviously. Um, so we're at a total of eight. The first shape we did, and then four of these. Hmm. Yeah, my, my one question is more so... Whether or not that one almost bow tie shape is technically a pentagon. But... We could... Would it work if I were to do something like this, where it was one, two, and then... Yeah, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. That's technically a pentagon as well, a house shape. So then we could do four of these as well. So we're already at 12, right? Um, just due to the symmetry of a square, we could rotate this 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, um, and we'll get four unique orientations of this shape on this diagram. So that would be... So now we're at 12. Is there any other way I could sort of move this around? I don't think so. I think we've found them all. Um, in, in a sense, what you're doing is you're taking this square in the middle, right? You're taking the square and you're saying, I need to add one side to it. So if I eliminate one side and add two sides, I'm fine. And I do that by adding this onto it. Okay. Or I could eliminate two sides and add on three sides. So you get rid of these two sides and instead add on one, two, three, and then you've got that shape we just made. Or you could get rid of three sides and add on four. So we get rid of this side, this side, and this side, and instead we add on the one, two, three, four. So that's how we made that pentagon. I don't think there's a way to add on the, oh, what if we get rid of four and then add on five because we're you know, inscribed within a square. So we're limited to only being able to add on up to four sides like that. So I think that's actually all of them. And I think we found all 12. Like I said, the only thing that I'm unsure of is if this will count, this shape roughly, <laughs> will count as a pentagon. Because if so, that adds an extra four onto it. But I guess we'll know when we when we try for the answer. Yeah, I'm gonna try twelve. I feel confident, or I feel like just intuitively myself, and then the game itself will 
Luke, want it to be a, an open space within the shape. All right. Every so that intuition was correct an then. Three different types of pentagons are hidden in the picture. Nice. Cool, we got that one. I like that one. What cunning lads you two are. I hope you'll stop by and sell puzzles with me again sometime. Any paint? Any painting? Nope. All right, you got another puzzle for us right off the bat, Gerard. Rapid fire. Sorry, Sonny, I don't have any more puzzles for you right now. Aw, but you will in the future. That's what I get from that. All right, prosciutto, how about you? Any meat-related puzzles? Any chocolate? Hey, Professor and Sidekick, I've been waiting for someone like you. Listen, I've got something very interesting to tell you. If you solve this puzzle here. <laughs> of course, of course. Leave it to me. A sweet treat. 30 pick rats. More chocolate-related puzzles. <laughs> this reminds me of the queen problems. On the way home from the store, you unwrap a perfectly square block of chocolate. Much to your dismay, you find that only four of the 16 chocolate squares have an almond in them. You and your three friends want to divide the chocolate evenly along the lines between the squares. However, just to make things interesting, you've decided to divide it so that each piece is the same shape and contains an almond in a different location. Oh. So they each... Interesting. So they all need to have an almond. Hmm. This is pretty neat. So they're all the same shape and they all contain an almond, but that almond is in a different location. Um, what's, what's pretty neat about that... Well, actually, does that help us out too much? Um, not particularly. But it's got to be... I mean, I'm thinking really in terms of almost like Tetris. <laughs> really. Um... At first glance, the T-shape appears to work, but you'll have a repeated almond spot. Unfortunately. Um, and for those of you that aren't really seeing what I'm talking about, you could divide it like so, so that they're all the same shape. However, these two, this right, lower right, and then bottom almond will fall in the same slot. So that's actually not how you're supposed to do it. So we have to think in terms of some other shape. And again, it's a four by four piece. Um, so each piece needs to be a block of four. A te tetromino? Is that what they're called? <laughs> I don't know. And I think what we're gonna wanna do is this, where we kind of divide it up into these L shapes. do it yeah um, it will so now just to make sure they're all in different spots yes um, this one on the far left is technically in the at the there's like a three row and then a two row it's at the end of the three row there's one in the middle of the row of the three row there's one at the I guess like the bend of the piece and then there's one at the end of the two row so yeah there are four same shape different almond spot Cool. That should Another be chocolate it. puzzle solved. Another puzzle solved. <laughs> That's another chocolate puzzle solved, Mr. Layton. Overall, I'm a fan of almonds in my chocolate. Although, controversial statement coming, I like white chocolate more than milk chocolate. I know, I know. So you can tell me how wrong I am in the comments. You can tell me how white chocolate's not even chocolate. I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, I see now. Heck, is that really all I need to do to solve it? Oh yeah, I promised to tell you something, didn't I? Well, listen here. The greatest culinary delight in all of St. Mysterio's croutons, ginger pudding. It's delicious. Ironically, the worst thing you could ever put in your mouth is also a dish of croutons. Honestly, you could choke a donkey with those scones. <laughs> those are some, uh, aggressive, aggressive words. Okay, um... And with that, I mean, I guess we'll we'll take a token, right? Is it not there? Where is it? Our robo pupper showed us where it was. 
But I'm clicking all over that area. There it is. <laughs> all right, we'll head out then. Now, because we did take some time to sort out the furniture and everything, I do want to briefly take a look at that again. So the Baron statue. Wow, that's all I can really say. <laughs> I must admit, the Baron's gaze is a bit unnerving. All right, we're gonna leave it with, uh, with Luke then. Oh, wow, look at that happiness. That's what I should be doing. More so than whether or not, you know, they say certain things. I should be doing, I should be looking at that. Um, the Splendid Painting, the World Map. Like, what happens if I put this here? Yeah, Luke's happiness doesn't increase. Well, neither of them has their happiness increase, really. But for now, I guess that is okay. Um, the gramophone. Can't wait to hear the latest songs in glorious mono sound. Let's see what Luke has to say about it. He's not particularly happy. Um, what else do we get? We have the lacquered stool, and then the tea table. So I think, I think we're good with where it is right now. Not bad and all right. Eh, well, I guess it's uh, not bad, right? <laughs> um, so it looks like the next area, again, just to be safe, there's nobody here. No, okay. So then we'll head up this way and we can finally head up over here towards the tower. Ooh, look at how the map changed. That is very neat. So what we're going to do is continue along this path in the next episode. I'm really excited to make our way towards the tower. I think we've explored everything aside from the path to the tower and solved all those puzzles. We've solved 91 of them, which is pretty crazy. Uh, just to check real quick on our puzzle index, how high of a number puzzle have we solved? The highest number puzzle was 114. I would not be surprised if... Uh, if there aren't more than like 130 or so puzzles in the game. <laughs> and we've solved quite a few of them, right? We're missing some in the 80s, some in the 90s, and a few scattered before then, but for the most part, we've been pretty comprehensive. So I feel like we're getting actually approaching the end of the game, which is crazy, but also not that crazy given it's been almost, you know, 12 and a half hours of playtime. But I'm really excited to see what's up ahead. I want to see how the story comes together, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode's puzzles and are looking forward to the next episode just as much as I am. But until the next episode, Zoom Night Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>